Paris, friend. We're so glad to be here today. So glad you are there. And um, perhaps you've never ever seen this program before. I hope the name of the program is self-explanatory because we are interested in the home, especially the people in the home, and uh, want to keep that just as good and righteous as possible. And so if this is your first time, don't let it be your last time. And also a shout out to the wonderful, wonderful viewers who have been with us for a long time. We appreciate your faithfulness, your support, your love, your financial support, and your prayers, all of that. Thanks so much. Hey, we got return guests today, and I love these girls. We got two ladies here today, so that's why you really need to grab yourself a cup of tea and sit down with us, because this is really girl talk today. But for all you male viewers, you're welcome to be here also. Lisa Troyer and Don Yoder have come back. I think they've been here a couple of times. And they have a brand new book forwarded by John Maxwell. And the name of it is Real Women Leading uh, Proverbs 31. A lot of you gals out there who are Christians, you are uh, very much aware of Proverbs 31 woman. She has been, boy, she has been discussed a lot through the years. And a lot of women resent her because she is so capable as comes across the pages of the Bible so perfect. However, these gals are, uh, have written a book which deals with her leadership. And I have, uh, have I studied that chapter? I've always been aware that she was a businesswoman. There, there were a lot of things about her uh, that in addition to her being a good wife and mother. So John Maxwell, who is the premier teacher of leadership in Christianity, has endorsed this book and uh, really believes in it very much. So I want you to, if you haven't met these girls, that you'll meet them again. And I'm going to join Stephanie. We're going to make a pizza salad. Doesn't that sound good? Never thought of it before, but wait till you see the ingredients. And also, I want to again offer you the book, uh, 40 Days to Healthy Living. And this is a great book. You get it in little, little paragraphs that what you can do for 40 days. That's not too long. That can really get you on track physically, emotionally and spiritually. That's what the Lord wants for you. So I will send you this book. If you will just send us at least $15, it helps keep us on the air, you know. We need the support. And also, I think this kind of a book is kind of a, just a good exchange that we can help you and you help us. If you use your credit card, it's 1-800-229-0059 or <clears throat> Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, Three three seven five eight. Yeah, three three seven five eight. I, yeah, I want to see if Stephanie knew that, and she did. Welcome. Hi. 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 How are you? Good. How are you? Uh, this is Stephanie. She has uh, married, so, about to get married. Mm -hmm. A teenage mm -hmm. daughter. Mm -hmm. She represents so many of you out there, and she's that coupon hoarder. And I'm not a hoarder. <laughs> <laughs> I resent that. No. <laughs> That's two, that's two shows together. Isn't that amazing? The coupon hoarder. How do they do that's that? That's my new blog. No. Well, not if you hoard coupons, that's okay. But yeah, the, uh, hoard stuff. No, I, what I was going to say is, um, we think of coupons for food mm -hmm. mainly, but you use them to buy clothes. Yes. You got to tell the mm -hmm. ladies about yep. that. Yep. I want to talk about maximizing gift cards. I got gift cards for Christmas, so my husband needed an outfit for the wedding, so we got him a slacks, we got him a shirt, socks, and shoes, and after all, I was all done, I made $1.80. Oh, well, how do you do, with a gift card, I guess. Yeah, well, I had a, a huge savings, 30% off, I used the gift cards, and then they were giving cash back, too, so I spent eight eleven and I got $10 <laughs> back. I need to go shopping. So maximizing, you, you know, you have gift cards and you think, oh, let's just go blow it. But right. you do everything you can to save save money on top of it. Yeah, I was thinking about that. You know, kids get a gift card and they, they go out the day after Christmas and, and just because they have mm -hmm. it. So mm -hmm. that's a good idea. Mm -hmm. Hang on to it and have a purpose for it. All yeah. right, what are we going to do? Okay, so I have pasta, tomatoes, cheese, pepperoni, and onions I'm going to mix together. Okay. You have um, canola oil. You have... Parmesan cheese, red wine vinegar. Did you put the Parmesan in the oil? Yeah. Okay. You have oregano, pepper, garlic, Is salt. this red wine vinegar? Yes. So you're going to mix all yours together. I'm going to mix all mine oh, together. Oh, boy. You know what? This smells so good that I'm not even going to try it because I'm afraid that after one bite, I'm not going to be able to stop. Yeah, I don't think we really need to try this. You can tell. Oh, 
It smells, oh, I think you should try it. Yeah. And you know, we are, just good we're television. so limited with time and everything. Mm -hmm. And we really do try to find recipes that um, are usable and different. Well, sure, and you know, summer, you know, when we're taping, it's May right now, so summer is mm -hmm. upon us. Yeah. And how <gasps> great to have a wonderful. That is beautiful. I know, how great to have a wonderful selection of summer salads that you can yeah. put together. And this could definitely be a meal. And we got another one coming up in a couple of days, but mm -hmm. I'm not going to let any. Okay. I just... And then I have pepperoni, which, you know, it, the pepperoni and the cheese is obviously what makes it pizza. So you know, you... Uh, Stephanie is the secretary of our president, and she and says she's going to take some. Because I haven't fed <laughs> him yet today. <laughs> Does he have any idea what he owes homekeepers? Yeah, no. No. No, not one bit. Okay, I want to so taste you... this. That smells so, so oh my. good. Okay, so I have mine mixed together. We're just gonna pour that over. And then I'm just gonna, and I'll tell you, this is one of those salads you wanna put together and then you want it to sit in the refrigerator for a while. Uh huh. So that all the flavors can just marry together and develop a wonderful relationship in the refrigerator. And then when um, you pull it, here's. I got blossom. jumpers. Yeah. Um, when you pull it out, Toss it a little bit oh, again. Oh, and put some croutons on. This smells ridiculous. Mm. I love, I love something that's so colorful like that. Here, get a piece of pepperoni and cheese when you try it, because I okay. think that's going to be so good. I think, I think our boss is going to like this. I think he'll love it. There you go. Yeah, a little pasta. Mm. There you go. Okay. Talk to the folks while you. Okay. Have a whole repertoire of summer <laughs> salads. Don't turn your oven on during mm -hmm. the summer. Is that delicious that or is what? Absolutely it delicious. It smells so good. I can't even stand it. If there are a few croutons on the top. Yep. Um, talk to them. I'm delicioso. Mm -hmm. That's all I can say. It's delicious. You want this recipe? Yes, you do. And if you do, we'll be glad to send it to you. No cost. A lot of a lot of you email us. And well, we just email that recipe right back to you. So if you want it or write to us, if you don't have email, we're glad to get it out to you. And stay with me. If you haven't met Dawn and Lisa, you're gonna love these girls. I promise. That is deep. If you would like a copy of today's recipe, just write to the address on your screen, or you can email your request to artheline at rippy.org. to welcome back to the show Don Yoder and Lisa Troyer. Welcome, girls. Thank you. It's yeah. always nice to have you. You sang last time, I think. Mm -hmm. Don is a um, songwriter. And uh, do, you, do you write music also? We write music. You write together? together yeah. Okay. And uh, they've made recordings. And tell us about your radio ministry. Uh, we have a program we call Circle of Friends because everybody needs a place to belong. And uh, you know, we, we do some dialogue things, interviews with uh, musicians and authors. And a lot of it is, though, just kind of what you do here, you know, mm -hmm. communicating with people that want to, you know, improve their lives and do it through the framework of biblical principles. There's no greater feeling than that you've said something, some nugget, something. Mm -hmm. I know that's happened in my life. You know, somebody just said something that changed it forever, and we hope that happens. Now, Dawn, you're a, a CEO of a big company? Pretty good size, Micro. yeah. 500 yeah. employees, yeah. right? Yeah, that's right, that's right. It's, that just sounds enormous to me. Is it something that you grew into as a family business yeah, or something? Family business, grew up in a family business. I always relate it to, like, people who have a farm. If you grew up on a farm, you learned how to milk cows, mm -hmm. you learned how to plant corn, whatever your farm did, mm -hmm. our farm was a business. So, mm -hmm. you know, you grow up, Lisa did too, grew up in family business. And when you grow up in that place, you know, you sleep on the floor because mom's working and dad's mm -hmm. working and they put you to work wherever they can. And mm -hmm. you kind of grow up in that and understand how to relate to people and how to manage things and how to lead people into the next phase of their life. So. Well, it's really an apprentice it really is. deal, you know, and Jesus was a carpenter because Joseph was. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so, uh, that's that's something for parents to think about, um, including children in 
everything like that. It can really benefit them. All right, um, John Maxwell, the kind of the premier leader, because he teaches leadership a lot, uh, likes your book and honors women as leaders. What was it that, you know, made you want to write a book on this subject? Because we know that Proverbs 31 woman, uh, there's been a lot written about her. Well, I believe in the church today, there are many women like Dawn and I that were involved in, you know, family corporations or just working outside the home in general. And many ladies don't have that schedule that facilitates that Tuesday morning Bible study. And over the years, I mean, as a working mom and wife, I mean, I have sometimes felt like um, maybe not as embraced by the church as much as I wish that I would be. Mm -hmm. And Dawn and I discussed that, and we found that there were so many other ladies that were, you know, in our same situation. And so we wanted to take uh, those biblical values and show how they can be applied in the marketplace and how, especially now with today's millennial generation with the, so much disjointedness in their own homes, you know, how we have the privilege in the marketplace to, to mentor them, to, to uh, nurture them. And, and, and Dawn's story with her corporation and the way that's manifested itself, it's a real testimony to the influence that we can have in the marketplace as women. I fear that in the church there's an awful lot of, okay, this is my Christian life and this is church and this is my job and never the twain shall meet. Yeah, it does seem to be a temptation for us. We don't really know how to mix the two. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes we have our boxes. We put our compartmentalize our life, and that's where it all fits. Mm -hmm. But that's where I think the values comes in such handy. We talk about living by values because that means that we can kind of be like Jesus with skin. You know, we go out into the world, mm -hmm. and we're living out our faith, and we're influencing for our faith. And we can take our church with us, so to speak, you know, because it's part of who we are. That's the absolute truth that... We, when we walk in the room as Christians, something should change. And uh, our kids in high school, they should impact the school. The school shouldn't impact them. And I think that's a message that needs to be shouted from the housetops that uh, this isn't just work and this isn't church. They're supposed to kind of work together. There's a saying about you either create your culture or you allow your culture. One That's way or good. the other, yeah. you're in it. Yeah. And so it's like we have to do that. We have to create our culture and not just permit it. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think just sometimes a sentence or so will make a person think mm -hmm. that uh, when you go to work, you're, you're on the mission field. So um, be aware of that. Be aware of that. Now, why did you choose this poor, worn out <laughs> Proverbs 431 woman? I heard one woman say, I hate her. <laughs> yes, yeah, some of them do, yeah. <laughs> First of all, do you think she was a, a woman or a prototype? Yeah, I, I, a lot of people, you know, they think, well, she's just the culmination of the perfection mm -hmm. that a woman can be. But, you know, I don't believe that God asks, asks us to do anything that he doesn't equip us to do. And so as I read through that, I mean, I'm very literal application kind of person when it comes to the Bible. And if the Bible says it, then I should be able by the power of the Holy Spirit to be able to do it. I think sometimes we confuse of having to do everything at one time instead of having this be a seasonal thing. You know, when my mm -hmm. children were infants, you know, I was at home with them. Mm -hmm. I did continue to work in the family business, but I worked out of my home. As they grew and they were more independent, um, I think an example of that would be that my daughter's going to be moving to New York in the fall. She's graduating from high school in just a few days. I should have some Kleenex for you yeah. right well, now. Well, Dawn, she's probably <laughs> butt stock and, and, and uh, puffs right now. Yeah. I've cried through many yeah. children, yeah. <laughs> and, and I believe that she has the courage to step out of a small rural high school and pursue the dream that she believes that God has placed in her heart to be an influence in the entertainment industry because she's seen that it is possible to mm -hmm. do that, to be a believer, to be involved in what other people would consider secular pursuits. I mean, if a born again believer is in the presence of others, it becomes a sacred environment. It's not secular anymore. We have to be very, very careful not to separate those two. Like you said, I mean, when we go to work, Jesus goes along. And if we hide his light under a bushel, that's not what the Bible school song ta taught us, you know, when we were yeah. kids. You know, uh, I was telling you before the show that uh, I was given a trip, went to mm -hmm. New York with my daughter 
and uh, bless her heart, she searched for a show that I would go to because <laughs> I don't go to filthy things. Mm -hmm. And uh, this was called Newsboys. It's just as you could have it in Sunday school. Mm -hmm. um, but in the Playboy little magazine, mm -hmm. the lead role, and I don't remember his name, is such a handsome, uh, gifted young man. It gave just a brief autobiography or biography about him and then first corinthians something yeah. i can mm -hmm. do all the things that christ who strengthens wow. me it's right there in the yeah. playbill so your daughter uh she's going to be fine yeah. now i have heard that some people think this proverbs 31 woman was solomon's mother and um reason being when you go through the uh, book of Proverbs. Mm -hmm. There's so many warnings about adultery. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, Bathsheba paid a huge price. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm reading through the Proverbs right now mm -hmm. again. And uh, boy, it just pops up, pops up everywhere. So mothers have great influence. Mm -hmm. I believe that uh, Jacobed's uh, watching over Moses when mm -hmm. he's very small was the reason he could walk away from Egypt and everything. Mm -hmm. Somebody put something in him yeah. for. Now, what did you discover about this woman? Either one of you can answer this. Uh, that suggests she's a good leader. Well, there's when you read through the whole chapter and you really look at all the things that she was doing. If she wasn't operating out of good values, the things like the husband and children rise up and call her blessed. Mm -hmm. Those things wouldn't happen. When you see that she was just using everything that God had put in her hand mm -hmm. to bring the most out of life, that's where you see leadership. Because leadership is, I mean, she, it says she delegated to servants, said she created goods and took them to market. She decided when to buy and sell a field. If you're dealing with servants. Well, she's in real estate. Yeah, mm -hmm. she's doing real estate. She's doing servants in her household. That means she's leading people. She's managing people. She's resolving conflict. Mm -hmm. And they, if they're calling her blessed, if if her children say she's blessed, that means she's not bitter. Mm -hmm. If you're not bitter, that yeah. means you have a real good forgiving nature. Because if you deal with people all day long, mm -hmm. you need to have a good forgiving nature because we're mm -hmm. all going to make mistakes. Mm -hmm. So you can see the essence of leadership through values throughout the chapter. And what I love the most is what you brought up er earlier, Arthleen, that this was a woman who was using whatever God put in her hand. That it did, wasn't just, I I'm a good cook. If you're a good cook, that's mm -hmm. fantastic. I'm a horrible cook. Mm -hmm. That pizza salad, I think I could handle that. So I'm a little bit <laughs> excited about that because I think I could do it. We'll give you the recipe. But it's, I, I need it. But it's using whatever God puts in your hand to the best that you can in the season of life that you're in. And that's what she represented. That's what good leadership is. Mm -hmm. You know, she must have been very organized too. And look, look how organized God is. I mean, the sun comes up and mm -hmm. the seasons and... Not the author of confusion. No, not yeah. at all. And our homes are full of confusion mm -hmm. in America. They really are. Well, I like what you said about, you know, people making the assertion that, that it was Solomon's mom. Mm -hmm. Because what that tells me, you know, just as we're sitting here discussing if it. If it's true. Yeah, if <laughs> we it, don't know. If, in fact, it's true. But, I mean, I think it speaks to the fact that we don't have to be perfect mm -hmm. to be used by God and that there is the opportunity for redemption in any situation. And if we really do believe that all things do, in fact, work together for good for those who love God and are mm -hmm. called according to his purpose, if, in fact, that was his mom, I mean, mm -hmm. she could look back over the situations that were not optimal, mm -hmm. but because of her leadership values, mm -hmm. knowing that those things can be transformed into, you know, instructing the, the child who would lead a nation. And I mean, I think that we really have to be yeah. careful not to uh, think, I mean, if somebody stays home and homeschools their children, you could be homeschooling, you know, the, a future uh -huh. president of the United States. Yeah. How seriously do you take the responsibility that you've been given, whether you are the real estate agent or the homeschooling mother or the school teacher or the Bible study teacher on Tuesday morning at 10? I mean, all that responsibility is equal. It's just the application is not always in the same environment. Yeah, and that's so good about perhaps you're raising, you know, the next king or president or whatever. That ought to give... Uh, a lot of good initiative to moms mm -hmm. everywhere, no matter what the educational system is going on, that they can be attended. Now, you chose 10 points of her leadership. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to give you a test on them, but give me, give me some of them. 
Go ahead, Dawn. Well, we talked about responsibility and honesty. An important one we both felt was resolving conflict, mm -hmm. you know, not letting conflict, not pretending it's not there and not just blowing it up. But mm -hmm. how do we resolve conflict really well? We mm -hmm. talked about um, generosity and influence. Mm -hmm. Just all these different points of how you can live your life in a manner that attracts people to Christ, displays good leadership, and helps bring out the best in other people as you fulfill the destiny that God put in your life. That is so good. That's good stuff. And it's in this book. If you just tuned in, I'm talking to the authors of this book, and we're going to put up a website. Uh, you can go there and find out where to get. I'm sure Amazon.com and all those places yes. where they can go. But it's real women, women leading, and I sure uh, this should be in every pastor's library. And if you are a leader in the church, uh, a lot of good women are. I think this would help you. I, I've spoken for a lot of statewide things, and you know the the superintendent would. <laughs> I've had more than one of them tell me said, "If I want to get something done, I give it to the women." Mm -hmm. uh, you know. Uh, Women are willing. <laughs> they are. They are more willing, actually. Um, the the whole idea, of, as you express so beautifully, that you're positive about everything you do. I think that's huge, especially for the children. Mm -hmm. If you're fixing your dinner, whatever it is, whatsoever your hands find to do, you mm -hmm. do it, and uh, do it with a smile on your mm -hmm. face. It just changes uh, your kids. Yeah. Yeah, one of the things that I learned about my kids through t just talking about values, my son Jackson and I were talking about attitude. Jackson is uh, 16. And so we're talking about attitude, and he said, oh, one of the things that really frustrates me is when people complain a lot. And in my mind, I'm thinking, oh, people complain at you, like you did something wrong. or, And he said, no, that's not what I mean at all. Just people, they're negative, and I can't do anything about it, and I can't help it, and I can't change it, and I just want to hide from it. And I just had this light Hallelujah. bulb moment go on yeah. because here's me. I come home from work and we wrecked this truck and that truck and this happened and that happened. And I come in and Jackson says, Mom, how was your day? Uh -huh. And I'm like, oh, Jackson, it was tough. This happened, this happened. Okay, and now Jackson is so shut down. <laughs> and he retreats to his room on his computer and I just think he likes his computer. And really what I learned through that conversation about value of attitude with Jackson is that really at that moment he just doesn't like me. He doesn't uh -huh. want to hear doesn't my hear negativity. Uh -uh. And I, that was a real eye opener. So I absolutely believe the attitude that we go home with our children is huge and it's one of the hardest places that there can be. I I think you're 100% right. I've always said the man might, according to scripture, be the head of the home, but the woman is that heart. And a woman can send her family out in victory in the morning or mm -hmm. she can send them out this way. Mm -hmm. um, it's been said. <laughs> I wonder if it's in the Bible. <laughs> if mama ain't happy, nobody's yeah. happy. <laughs> well. It's very, very true. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, th I think that women should uh, take stock. Say, you know, how am I coming across to these kids? Mm -hmm. Am I cranky all the time? Mm -hmm. And uh, the uh, these leadership qualities that you talk about, uh, you know, address those kind of things, and they're so important. Um, could you just give the viewers just an overview of uh, your ideas of, of this woman who has been written about and preached about and all, but yet I don't ever get tired reading that chapter. Yeah. Well, in, in my own personal life, I really like to make sure that when I'm reading the chapter, I read it in its full context and read those first nine verses that sometimes are just really not attached to the, that list of virtues that the woman displays. And it was the king's mom that was telling him that this is the kind of person that you want to be. I mean, uh, if, if you read that in context, it talks about to be somebody that, you know, looks at the interests of the, the poor disenfranchised. You know, don't drink too much because you won't be a good leader. You know, uh -huh. you won't be able to rule well. And then she goes on to tell him that this is the kind of woman that will not only represent him well, but that will plant seeds of creativity and, and uh, anointing, I think, mm -hmm. in the generation to come. I mean, this is grandma saying, I want my grandkids to be raised in this kind of environment. Amen. And then there's the mother-in-law that, like my late mother-in-law, 
she encouraged me in the gifts that God had planted in me. She didn't make me feel like I was less of a woman because I did have um, more entrepreneurial leanings mm -hmm. than you know somebody that was just strictly staying in the home. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I mean, I, I think that um, there are so many opportunities that we as women, wear, no matter where we're placed by God, to influence the society and and to uh, encourage our children to to believe that they have influence as well. And you know, when you said you know, if mom's not happy, nobody's yeah. happy. Yeah. Um, so when you model it, it's, it's, all, it's almost a given that they're going to pick up. Now you also, that we won't have time to go into, uh, added other women to the mix. And when you were talking about uh, resolution, my first thought goes to Abigail. Mm -hmm. Do you have her, you have her in here, don't yes. you? Yes, we do. Yeah. Um, we love her. We do. <laughs> we do. She was married to Nabel, who was a fool. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I said that much. She was such a smart woman that had to be an arranged marriage, but <laughs> 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 she wouldn't have married him on her own. But um, how she saved lives mm -hmm. yeah. by not insisting that she get her way by humbling herself. Mm -hmm. And uh, read the story. I think it's the first or second Samuel, but uh, Abigail, but. David was a warrior and he was about ready to take some people on because he hadn't been treated right. But because of this woman, lives were saved and David acknowledged that. He said, God bless you, you know. And then the fool died, uh, Nabal, and uh, she married the king, so. So God did bless her. <laughs> <laughs> she really did. But isn't it wonderful that the Lord had all these women put in scripture because they're there for a reason and they're not all perfect and um, I just commend you on this wonderful book. Uh, as far as I can remember and I get hundreds of books but this is the first one to deal with women in leadership. Yeah there aren't a whole lot of them out there and one of the things I want to make sure I bring up really quick is that at the end of every chapter we kind of give a synopsis of mm -hmm. what that value looks like in action. Mm -hmm. How do you lead with this? What does mm -hmm. it look like? What did these people do and what are steps that you can take? And then you talked about taking stock mm -hmm. and we asked the reader and I call them just the participant because mm -hmm. you're not just a reader at that point to take stock. How am I doing with this and what can I do this week that I can see a small measurable change? Because if I even just mm -hmm. get 1% week better or 1% better a week, then at the end of 10 weeks, I'm 10% better. At the end of a year, I'm 52% better. And I think that's a very good yeah, way to set a good goal. And we have that opportunity. That's what's so wonderful. So I do hope you'll get this book because no matter what you do, whether you stay at home all the time or whether you work and you combine the two, uh, there's a real message for you in this book. And we really are out of time, my friends. So I hope that you will join me next time. Remembering there's no higher calling than that of a homekeeper. God bless you. If you should miss a Homekeepers program, you can catch up by going to www.ctnonline.com. Click on CTN Programs and then on Homekeepers.